Welcome to Creatively Speaking. I am your host, Leanna Weller-Smith of Weller-Smith Design, and you are listening to Season 2, Recipe for Success, Episode 2. In this episode, I interview our editorial production manager, Aaron Williams, to learn more about the editorial process that we take our clients through. We talk about Erin's background in editorial and how she started working with us here at WSD. She talks about each of the editorial phases and what to expect during each of them, and we also dig into the benefits of self-publishing over traditional publishing. We had a lot of fun recording this episode, and I hope that it provides a peek behind the scenes into what it's like to work with us. So let's take a listen. Hey, Erin, I'm so excited to have you on this episode of Creatively Speaking. Thank you, Leanna. I'm glad to be here. So for those of you who do not know, Erin is our editorial production manager. Um, And Erin, I think think in August, is that about right? It will be a full year, which is so exciting. Um, I just want to give a little context for people, which is, you know, I'm, a, you know, Weller Smith Design is a design agency. Uh, you know, we do print branding, web, um, publishing, self-publishing, but really I would say in the last eight years, our self-publishing arm has really taken off and in doing more and more books, especially more complex books where, you know, when you do a trade paperback or you do some other like smaller type of products, um, sometimes they come to you and they're quicker, they're faster, you know, because sometimes, you know, the author has a lot of the stuff done. It's a smaller product, but recently we've been doing a lot of cookbooks. And so what happened here with at Weller Smith design is that we decided, um, we really wanted to do these more, but I couldn't do it all. So I was scouring the web for who is this, what is this that I need, um, to help, um, because, you know, when you're doing like these bigger books, like the cookbooks that we've been doing, you know, you really need support on the editorial side. And I am more on the design side and the, and the project management side, we'll say. Um, so what I would love for you to um, just explain to everyone is what is an editorial production manager? But I guess even before we go there, let me take it a little step back and how about if you tell us a little bit about you and, you know, your path uh, to where you are at in editorial um, at this point? Well, so let's see. So I started off, um, I went to the University of Illinois uh, down in Urbana-Champaign, and uh, I had a degree in journalism. Um, I wanted to do copy editing and page layout. And that's what I did for the first, you know, dozen years of my career. Um I ended up on the, I did, so let's see, I did copy editing for the news section, um, for local news, that sort of thing. And then I moved into features. So I was actually the, um, as an associate editor um, at a local newspaper, and I used to handle the um, food pages and food and family and gardening and all sorts of stuff and uh, a whole bunch of different lifestyle um, stories, that sort of thing. And um we, I ended up moving into publishing uh, on the book side. Uh, I worked for Rodale uh, when when Rodale was around. Rodale's since closed, but um, they used to do. I used to do books for um, Men's Health, Women's Health, uh, Runners World, Bicycling Magazine, um, and so I was on the book side um, doing editorial for them. And I did. I was a project editor there, and so I was in. I learned all about. You know, I I had, had the background from the newspapers and and being an editor. So I was used to setting you know some editorial calendars, um, and. At Rodale, I really got into the nitty gritty of books and, you know, from the creation of the manuscript all the way through publication and really learned all the ins and outs about how books get done. And um, yeah, I had some, I, I've done freelance copy editing and proofreading as well. And so I, I do a little bit of that still, as well as working for Leanna now. And so I get to, uh, you know, I've had the the traditional publishing house background. Um, and I've had the, and very firmly entrenched in the nonfiction space <laughs> between my newspaper background and working for Rodale, again, a nonfiction space. Um, 
And, you know, that's, that's led me here and I'm beyond happy because it's, it's been a great experience, both my background and, and now what I'm doing here for uh, helping people getting their, their dreams published basically. So, yeah. And that what so when I was looking for that person, I mean, I had somebody um, for a little while right before you, and that was a great experience for me because it showed me what what was possible, what, what could happen. And so when I was looking for someone to really step into the everyday with me on that editorial side, I went through LinkedIn. So I always go through LinkedIn whenever I'm trying to find editorial uh, partners or, so I'm always, always searching and doing all sorts of searches. And I was so excited to meet you and to chat with you because just like you said, you have like this like 360 sort of um, <laughs> experience in that you've done, you know, design, you know, it, you know, all the, the pieces. Like, so for me, it's great because not only are you on the editorial side and you can really help guide that, but you're also a great sounding board for me when it comes to the design. So it's like, it really is having, and that is, you know, I, I think that, it's great to find an editorial team like that, like, like, a, like partners, people that can really bounce off of each other, because again, it, it is that collective of like, of the, of your experience, my experience and how we can kind of bring that all to fruition. So. Yeah. And that's the thing is that I, I love doing like I when I worked at the newspaper, I did layout. Basically, I was kind of like a typesetter, you know, yeah. like being a layout person in newspapers, basically being a typesetter. And, you know, you run things by the graphic designers and they're telling you, OK, you know, like, yes, this this is following through on my vision for this, you know, and, and being able to implement that. But it was great training for being in books because I can look at something and it's like, oh, yep, that's that's off by a pico over here. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I love that you speak old school terms today. with me. I mean, exactly. I don't know if anyone's going to know what a pica is, but we no. do. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But that, and, and what's also cool is that you are not too far. I'm in New York, you're in New Jersey. Yep. And we actually got to meet up for the first time a couple, like a month ago, or maybe a month and a yeah. half ago, which was cool. And we went to the bookstore. Mm -hmm. So it, that was awesome because you were like, we're talking about our clients and you're finding things and I'm taking pictures and, you know, that, that whole piece of um, research and things like that. It's fun to, to actually have somebody to bounce ideas off of too. Yeah, that was a fun trip too, because we got to go through a whole bunch of different cookbooks, get a whole bunch of ideas for clients. So it was really cool because we were both sitting there and we both had our cameras out and and the bookstore ended up reaping the benefits of our, oh, of yeah. our search because we bought several books. I know, we, 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 we made a few purchases. Yes. Um, yes. But one of the things that I, that really attracted me to as well, which is like that you did have experience in cookbooks. So that is one of the big things is that, you know, these cookbooks that we're doing, we're doing so many more of them. We are not a hybrid publisher. We really truly help people to self-publish. Um, we do help them go into these different um, sort of funnels depending on their needs. But what I would love for you to do is to just explain what an editorial production manager can do, what, what you do for our team. So my job is basically to keep everybody on track. I am to, I, I, I look at the calendar and I say, okay, we've got this coming up. This has got to be done by this date. And I'm there to make sure that everybody's pushing along. So your product actually gets out the door by the time you want it. So my job is basically to make sure that everybody's moving along. Everybody's clear about what stage we're at and what expectations happen to be. And I'm there to answer questions as well. So if you're confused about something, you know, you throw it in my direction and I find the person who's going to give you the best answer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so there's a few different sort of um, lanes of editorial that we provide. So I would love for you just to kind of explain a little bit about what those lanes are when somebody does come to work with us. Okay. So we basically have editorial is involved in three different areas and you need to think of it as a funnel. 
up at the very top. So you're going down like this, right? So very broad to very fine. So at the very top of that is your developmental editor. This is the person who's going to be guiding you. They're going to be, once you pass that manuscript to us, the developmental editor is the first person who's touching it. They are taking a look at it and they're saying, they're making sure that your narrative makes sense. So the story that you are hoping to give your audience, they are there to make sure that it's that it's there, that what you imagined in your head is actually coming across on paper. So they're there and they're they're looking at it to make sure that your point is clear, that the things that you've promised, that you're that's in the manuscript and that um that everything makes sense, that it's all kind of like that there's there's a cohesive narrative throughout your story. So whether that's your cookbook, you know, and making sure that everything is makes sense, that your chapters are balanced, that um, you know, if you're telling people there are tips that actual tips are appearing in your manuscript, um, that they're not just, you know, like randomly placed and they can kind of point out different things to you. So this way it refines your manuscript and gives you a more polished piece. OK, so that's your first step is your development edit. Um, after that, you have your copy edit. Your copy editor is doing a more refined edit even from there. They're really your first reader because they haven't talked to you beforehand. They don't know like what your ultimate goal happens to be. They're reading it just like any other reader would go through your book. But they're making sure that everything is even a, a more, you know, like a light fact check. You know, if something sounds off. They're going to check it. They're going to make sure that you spelled that name correctly. So, you know, that you're giving the correct name for a recipe. It's all the little things like they're really looking for those details that you don't want a reader to find. You know, they're 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 there to make sure that there's no embarrassing errors that are going to get through, that everything makes sense. Um, and they're going to be checking for commas and periods and that sort of thing. And they'll make their edits on that end. But that's all when everything's still in the manuscript phase. We still have one more set of eyes we're going to put on that after all the after the manuscript is flowed into your book. So that the proofreader is your final set. And that person is going to be looking for your headers and your footers and making sure that everything is, you know, that the the title that's appearing here is the title that's appearing here. They're doing the even more fine nitty-gritty type of editing. And they're really the ones who are going through for those little errors, you know, your, your commas, your periods, making sure that, oh, you know, like they see, because they see everything as it's laid out on the page, they are the ones who can really check like, oh, you know what? We treated this one way here. We didn't treat it that same way here. Which style did you want to go to? You know, and really just giving you an even more refined package. So um, again, a lot of the way that we're doing this um, as far as editorial is concerned is, I, and I think this is where we kind of stand apart from what you get with a traditional publisher too, is that you have control over what we're changing. Yeah. So we have, um, what we've started to, to do now for our clients is we have a style sheet that we ask you to give us information on first. So you have an even greater amount of control over what's appearing in your book. Yeah. And I think that's really important because it brings the client into the process so that they're not overwhelmed because the editorial side, to be quite honest, is overwhelming. <laughs> um, it's overwhelming because I am, like I said, I am on the design side. So I like looking at the pretty product, but it is, you know, these manuscripts, they can get really, really long. And um, there's just a lot of content, a lot of checking, a lot of things. So that developmental edit is so important, getting that style sheet from the client understanding things that because especially like with these cookbooks more than likely it is a food blogger that we're working with mm -hmm. or it could be a a health coach or somebody like or a nutritionist or um you know a fitness instructor who has they have but they've curated these recipes and yeah. so this is on that's online content online content is way different than the finished product so a cookbook in general there's just different there's different rules and structures and ways that to approach it when it's in the cookbook so that developmental edit is so important well i think what's also interesting about uh, the development edit is that 
sometimes with the cookbook blogging, you've written that over a long period of time and things change over time. So maybe you've since changed a way that you refer to something. Maybe you called it this at some point and now you call it that. Maybe your writing style has changed. All that is something that the developmental editor is looking for and making sure that everything is cohesive. So this way, everything like, oh, everything is phrased in a similar way. It's, yeah. it's all that like continuity and making sure that everything is in its best possible, you know, view for the reader. Yeah. And, you know, the, the different editorial um, partners that we have, mm -hmm. they are coming from a cookbook background as well. So the developmental edit, the copy editors, even our proofreaders and indexers, they are well-versed in cookbooks um, for publishers here. And most of them have worked somewhere here in the city. Um, and they, you know, I think it's really important to make sure that that is the type of editorial partner that you're working with, because if it is that type of, of product, you want to make sure that the editors um, are well-versed in that type of editing as well. Yeah. And I also think too, the, you know, once, so you were saying after copy edit, then the next piece is the proofreading of mm -hmm. the editorial pieces. You know, I think that proofreading is that, that um, sort of leg is so important because it, that is when the book is typeset. So the book is in what we call pages. So that means, you know, it's all laid out, all the pieces, all the elements are in place, but stuff happens when you take a Word document and you move it into InDesign. You might lose your italics. You might lose, um, this one had bullets, but it doesn't have bullets anymore. And, and so it, you know, and as a typesetter, even as the designer, especially that first pass, you really, you really need to look at it from all those angles and try to, so that's what I love about, you know, not only having myself, but having you as another pair of eyes. So you've got the proofreader, you've got myself, you've got you, we give it back to the client. The client sees yep. every single process. Yep. And that's why I think initially it's always overwhelming for them, that developmental edit, when they get it back with, 5 million comments and like, you know, but we, you know, it's part of the process and, and it's, it, it me does not mean that they don't have good content. It just means mm -hmm. that they're cleaning it up. But I think yeah. each of these pieces to the puzzle are really important. Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing about the proofreading is that they're also looking at it and can also look at the photos and make sure that a photo hasn't been repeated or the correct photo is there. And so they just make sure that, um, you know, sometimes too, it's like, as things get translated, we change, oh, like, let's say, well, we decided to do all caps for, you know, for this headline or for this, this, you know, sidebar style. Sometimes errors can be introduced as those things are happening. So they're there to make sure that everything is as it is planned to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I love having you as my counterpart to this because I can I can only answer so many questions too. Mm -hmm. So especially when it comes to these word documents and how to you know reply or how to mark them up or what what the next process is like you really are in there between all the different phases with the client. Right, and we have it set up too in the. We have a direct way for you to reach us, not just email, but we have um, in our project management tool, we have a chat area now so you can, everything stays in one place and this way all your questions are there and it's easy to get a hold of myself, to get a hold of Leanna, um, whoever you have questions for. And, you know, I'm, I have an alert on mine. So <laughs> <laughs> and you have a question and you're freaking out, I'm I'm there to answer those <laughs> questions. So make sure that you can, you know, do the, what you need to do on your side so we can continue to move things around. So. Yeah. And can you kind of just shed some light into about how long we can expect this editorial process to- So it takes longer than people expect um, because you're really looking at, depending on the size of the manuscript, 
each one of those different phases of editorial takes several weeks. So, you know, for that development edit overall, it normally takes like six to eight weeks because you're looking at four weeks for that initial edit with the copy or with the development editor. And then you have two weeks to respond to the queries, to go through the manuscript, respond to any queries. And then they have two weeks to incorporate the things that you've, you've said you want done, you don't like, you love this, whatever it may be. Um, as we said, that's all in your control. So if you don't like something that the development editor has suggested you do, you can say no. So, and you wouldn't have that option at a traditional publishing house necessarily. You know, it's like, no, this is our style. This is how we do it. It's like, no, I, I hate the Oxford comma. I really don't want that. <laughs> then you're allowed to say that. So that's actually something we tackle even in our style sheets now is we we ask you, like, how do you prefer that this looks well, in, a, in a normal publishing house? All that's already dictated for you. So if you have something that you always use as a style on your blog, we'll incorporate that into the edit to make sure that that's translated into and all of our different levels. I'll understand that that is your style. That's how we're keeping it. So you know, whether it's a, a word that you're always like, no, I always capitalize that because I do this with it, you know, then that's something that we'll do. Because as we said, it's your dream. It's your book. We, it's not about us. So we all have our, our preferences for how we like to approach things, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah. we can guide, but it's ultimately your decision, what you want us to do. So that's what we're here to, to do. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then just like you said too, like, so even with a traditional publisher, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the biggest difference, you know, is when it comes to content is that for a traditional publisher, and if you want to get traditionally published, you have to have at least, I think it's like 80% um, all new content. So that is the beauty of these self-published books, because especially for these content creators that we're working with, they already have the content. Yes, some of it might be old, just like you had mentioned, and might need to be refined, you know, editorially, but it's all sound in content. And what they want to do is they want to package that up and do like a best of the best. I mean, yeah. they know what their best of the best is, especially if they are on in the online space and they are tracking all of this content that they're creating. So as a self-published author, you have control as to what goes in that book. Just like you had said, we help with balancing your you know, chapters and make it, but we're just, we're just providing advice. Like, oh, well, looks like you've got, you know, 25 over here, but you only got five here. So what are we going to do to make this feel right? You know, it's just bringing that to their attention, but they really do get to curate the content that goes into that product. And it does not have to all be new. So a traditionally published book, that content has not been created. It hasn't been tested. It hasn't been, you know, so so they are creating all new recipes. They are testing those new recipes. There's just a whole bunch of other stuff that goes in to the traditional side. And it's longer. It's a longer process in, in general. So you may get, get a, you know, proposal that is accepted, but then that book may not come out for a, a solid two years. Like yeah. it could be two and a half. It could be longer. Right. And we're looking at usually about a year, Yeah, but it depends on that. But the thing is, is that that can also depend on that can be sped up. It can be slowed down depending on what's going on. Yeah. You know, like if, if there's a lot of issues that come up early on, you know, sometimes or things that come up in life too, sometimes things suddenly get really hectic. And you just don't have the time for it. And that can drag out how long it's going to take to publish. Or let's say you are on it every single time pages come to you. Well, it's going to shorten the deadlines and we can move things along faster. Yeah. So, but the thing is, is that there's some, you know, there's variability in how long things, things can take. Um, I think typically we're looking at six months to a year, really closer to a year um, by the time you're going to have books in hand. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that goes down to how long it's also going to take just for the once pages are sent to the printer, how long it takes to get those pages back. Mm -hmm. um, because that can be a three month process right there. So that has to be in your calculation for how long your book is going to take. Yeah. Um, but traditionally we're, we're looking at, you know, about a year 
from the time, which is a lot longer than a lot of people think it's going to take like, well, sh- I've got all my content, boom, yeah, put me out. But it's actually a much longer process than that because of all the steps in between, making sure that there's a quality product at the end and just the natural timeline of printing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it can. It, and that's one of the things that we go through with the client. Like usually that's one of the questions they ask. They're like, how long is this going to take? And when can I get my, I want to have my book you know, to be the next, I'm, 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 I'm calling you on in the summer and I want it to be ready in the winter. And it's like, well, that's not going to happen. We have to look at it realistically. And just like you said, there's all these little pieces that have the puzzle that need, they still need to be done. So we are, what we are aiming to do is to emulate the traditional publishing sort of flow of these cookbook products. Since you know that flow well, I know that flow well from being in the industry. So we want to really guide our clients through that same sort of workflow. Um, But it is a shorter time time track because when it comes to that initial content, it doesn't have to be new. If it is new content, then it's understanding when they're going to have it ready for us so that we can strategically start it. You know, like we don't want to start too far in advance because then things could change. But well, you know, the other the, the other beauty of how we work is we can move both tracks forward now at the same time. So like you can be moving the editorial and I can be moving sample pages and styles and we right. can kind of move move everything along a little bit quicker on that side too. Yeah. 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 And you brought up pub, like printing. So even just like you said, printing, you know, when it comes to these self-published models of books that we're doing, there's different ways you can produce these. So it can be a print on demand product, or it could be a traditionally public, like, or traditionally printed, like it can be mm-hmm. a high-end printer overseas. It could be a high-end printer that's domestic, but we understand like where the client falls so that once that product is done editorially and design wise, then we can take it into that final stretch um, to, you know, being produced and then how they're going to, you know, get that out into the world. Right. And really just going back to the deadlines as well, um, from our experience, the amount of time it's going to take at a traditional published, traditionally published house, a lot of your time is going to be spent in the development edit. There's a lot of a lot of time spent during that period um, because they have their editorial standards that they want things to fall within, and you're going to have a particular amount of say over a certain amount of things. And depending on how your contract is written, that may be you, you may not have that much voice in what is allowed to be what they want to print. Because yeah. we've encountered that with some clients as well who did do the traditional route the first time through, and then. They ended up coming to us because they didn't have the control they were hoping to have. And, you know, they wanted a certain recipe published and the publishing house said no. So you're not always going to get what you were hoping for when it's being traditionally published because they're going to have the final say over it. So whether that's a certain style, a certain approach, every publishing house has their own style sheet. So on that style sheet that dictates like how your fractions are going to appear, you know, like what kind of comma you're going to use. Are you using an Oxford or are you using, you know, are you not? And that's all predetermined. There's a style sheet that they have in-house and everything's expected to adhere to that. So even if you hate that, oh, why are we lowercasing this? You know, that's, that's the way it is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're going to have to fight really hard in order to get them to change that. And a lot of times you may not be successful because there, there are just certain things that it's, that's their rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard from clients that just like you said, they were traditionally published. They, they saw how much work they had to do to uh, market it. They saw how much they had to do on in general of like creating the content and, you know, photos. And so they, they already saw how much work they had to do, but then they could, they also saw how much money they got like per unit sold. They, they could see like, you know, how much the investment was that they made just to get 
to make the book on their side. So they're mm -hmm. really getting, you know, really savvy with looking at those numbers and also looking at their numbers of, you know, like I said, their, their, um, you know, their, their following and, and their platform numbers and seeing how, like, is their audience ready to buy from them? So they've been looking at these books very strategically mm -hmm. and adding them into their business as that additional revenue stream. And it's so smart, but at the same time, it becomes what exactly what they wanted. Like they, they really get to develop that product, you know, in the, you know, we've had, clients say, oh, but I don't want it to re be rewritten or I don't want it to be, you know, overly edited. And that's, mm -hmm. we have control over that. We can talk to our editorial staff and say, this needs a light hand or this needs this mm -hmm. and, you know, pay attention to these pieces. So I feel like we, we as uh, helping to people to self-publish has been, it gives them so many more options. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really, I agree with that because you do have, you have a bit more control over what's mm -hmm. going on. Um, and you know what, it it all depends though on what your editorial goals happen to be, um, you know, and it, Leanna, you can go into this better than I can, just as far as what, what, what options are out there for people and, and how much control you have over some of these things. But um, it's, it's, it's something everybody has their, their different, you know, if they want to be in bookstores there, that's one particular approach. If you just want to sell it online and you're like, I'm selling it through, you know, I'm selling it online only through my website. I don't care about, you know, getting it out on any other platform. Then there, there are different routes you can take for each one of those and, and different returns on investment that you're going to get through each one of those platforms. Through each one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it always comes back to what are your goals? And what I like to say is we're here to help you get through all of that, answer all the questions. Um, and that's why I really wanted to just chat with you because that editorial piece is so important and it is a you know crucial part to producing a high quality product. So um, do you have any other sort of, like insight or anything that um, you think that, you know, potential clients or those who are looking to create a cookbook, do you have any like little tips for them organizing their content? Um, well, I know when we do, we actually have some tips on that, that we tackle in the Leanna's cookbook school and many, <laughs> many, many courses, um, just as far as organization and that sort of thing. The big thing is to be consistent about what's being included in your book and, and just think about what, like on, on the editorial side, um, you know, we want to make sure that your dream is, is being fulfilled, but we also want to make sure that it's being clear for your reader as well, because that's going to lead to happier client, you know, like that's, that's going to lead to a happier client as well. Cause if you're getting great reviews on your cookbook or on your product, that's going to make you happy as well. So if we can, figure out, you know, if we can make things smooth on our side and have everything read very well, that's going to lead to a better outcome for you because you'll get better reviews and hopefully then sell more books too. So, um, you know, I think sometimes people look at, at, oh my gosh, do I really need to have three other people looking at my product? I think it's, you know, I've gotten feedback from, you know, from my, on, on the blog about this, do I really need this? And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that if you do want a polished manuscript and you want a polished book and you want it to look professional and you don't want errors popping up in it, the more eyes you have on it, the better. Um, and, you know, we try to make sure that we're, we're worth our while <laughs> by really going through your book and making sure that everything's as, as good as we can possibly make it. You know, the truth is that there's always something you're going to look at in your book and go, gosh, I could, could I rewrite that again? Can I rewrite that again? And you can continuously do that on anything you've written. Take a look at an email, you know, how many ways can you rewrite the same thing? But, you know, um, it just, it's, the goal is to have clarity and to have you be happy with what's out there, because that's really what the book is. It's you putting yourself out there. And we just want to make sure that that's as smooth a process as it can possibly be. And that, you know, you're really proud of what you've put out there. So. Yeah, I agree hundred percent with all of that. <laughs> and I think one other thing I would add is that I, I think we all, we encourage this of our clients too, which is um, to not be afraid to show their 
personality to actually include, you know, we're, you know, we talk about the recipes we talk about, like, but there's this element of, you know, the client like or the reader getting to know the author, you know, especially for these you know, content creators that we have, and they have a platform, those people feel like they already know you. So they are, they're ready to buy. They they want to, that's why they keep coming back. That's why they, they you know, print off your recipes. That's why they comment. That's why they make your, your, your food. Um, but I think it's that personal, like those head notes, use the head notes. We've had clients take very creative photos to illustrate throughout the, the chapters. Or they have these little stories in the chapter openers, and maybe they don't have big headnotes, but they're storytelling. Because if somebody who does receive it as a gift or purchases it, you know, as a, a and not they don't know you, this mm-hmm. gives them the opportunity to get to know you. And even through like all of those things, that all gets through the developmental edit. So all of it feels refined. It flows well. So that was just one thing I I was just thinking about, like, you know, I I feel like I want authors that are, you know, these cookbook authors to know, like to bring that personal element into it. And, you know, that's what Aaron and I like to do on the calls. We talk about, we look at their blog, we look at the content, we look at what they can, what is the lane that they want to be in. And so I think it's, you know, it's very liberating because they can, they've built these communities and now they can actually create this beautiful, um, you know, timeless piece that people can, you know, reference over and over again with all these little tidbits of their own personality in there too. Yeah. So it's, (laughs) oh, go, no, go ahead. (laughs) Just that when you're in control of it, you can add in, you know, little, little yeah. fun bits into there. If you, if your thing is, oh, I always do this on my blog, well, we can incorporate that yeah. into the book as well. So it really is a uh, personal, pro- personal yeah. process, right? And with a, tr- with traditional, traditionally published cookbooks, it's, it's a little bit harder sometimes. Like it's, it's some of it, definitely the, the storyline is there that like, if you, mm-hmm. like, that is, I think that is one of the biggest things. If you did want to become traditionally published, it is having that 100%, well, maybe 90% unique story because no story is really 100% unique, but it is, I guess it is, it can be, but it's having that story and talking about it, talking about how, you know, your culture influenced this, you know, you starting this and your cuisine and, and, and how you present it to people. So I think it, you know, taking a key, a, a, a tip from that traditionally published route is to bring that personal story into your own, you know, self-published product as well. There's no reason why you can't like, that's really what makes it stand out and is unique. So, um, but I enjoy going through the process with you, Aaron, you make it so much easier for me so that I have somebody that can really help and provide that um, support to our clients. So I appreciate you and the work that you do for us. Um, but, Thank you. you know, you'll have to listen to all of the other episodes that we have coming in this series. Um, one of them, Aaron turns the table on me and asks me a bunch of questions, Um, but I appreciate you and I'm so glad that you, that you took the leap and you recorded these with me. (laughs) Indeed. Thank you for inviting me. (laughs) Bye. Bye.